Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Moments with Molly. <laughs> Sometimes I forget the name of, of this thing. I'm like, episode of Molly, of YouTube, of... Welcome, guys. <laughs> So today, I was just there and I was thinking, then I said to myself, self, self was like, mm. and then I was like, you know what you're going to do? And self was like, mm. <laughs> I learned that thing from my husband who learned it from a show somewhere of talking like that. And I said to self, mm. then self said, mm. it's really funny. Anyway, so um, I've just been hearing and seeing a lot of conversations on a lot of interesting things and so which i thought let's do like a myth buster thing like let's debunk the lies that the world has taught us because many things if not everything that the world pushes and encourages and tells us it's good go for it do this thing is actually against the will of god and it's possible to go about not knowing it and supporting and pushing the world's agenda if you don't know what the scripture actually says about it. So I just want us to uncover some of those. So I wrote down three things. Another one may come to my head because I always have like so many going through my head, but I never wrote them down because it was never a content idea. And then it just hit me this week. I'm like, oh my God, write it down. And I could only think of three. So as I start, I'm saying three. I don't know what the title of this video says. How many are they? I won't put, in fact, I won't put a number in the title. But like by the end of the video, I don't know. So, line number one. There is this thing about independence from our parents. Breaking free. You know, them allowing you to be your own person. You go your own way. They leave them in their own way. Blah, blah, blah. What? I am like, you know, being empowered to get a life of independence. What? All of that stuff in his life. Mm, okay, I hear you. What does the scripture say? I remember that's something for me that I really, really wanted to do. Like I couldn't wait for that time where I could be financially stable enough to then have independence from my parents. Where I could live outside of their house. Where I could be, I don't know, as far away from them as possible and all of that. Like I just really remember. And then one day I was having a conversation. So I touched when the pastor says one day, everyone shouts one day. So in my head, you guys shouted that. Thanks. You're a great audience. Love it. All right. So this one time I was sitting um, at a restaurant with my pastor and a friend of mine. We just finished a session with her, a mastermind session on leadership with a bunch of people. And everyone had left and it was just the three of us. She was waiting for something. So we waited with her. So we sat, we were having a conversation. I can't even remember how it started, but my friend and I, hey Peggy, how you doing? <laughs> I wonder if she remembers. We were having this conversation and we were so passionate about how, oh my God, I can't wait to leave my parents. I can't wait to live on my own. I'm so excited. Oh yeah, when it comes, oh, what, 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 maybe in the next, I don't know how many years, I'm going to do it, blah, 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 all of that. So we talked, we talked, and she was tipping into the conversation, like laughing at all the things we'd say, what, like really part of the conversation. Then at the end of it, she said, okay, tell me why. What, like, what, like, what is it? I want to understand, like, what is it exactly about your thing, like of wanting to leave so badly? Then we sort of started to stammer, like, mm, yeah, I just, you know, you need to be away from your parents. Mm, just independence, mm, just, you know. Then she said, okay. Then she shared a scripture. It's in Genesis and it's repeated in the New Testament in one of Paul's letters, I believe. For this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife. And so what she said was that if you look at it scripturally from the point of the Bible, what the Bible says is that the expectation from God, the expectation according to the Bible, is that you leave your mother and father to get married. Why? There's no wisdom above the wisdom of God. Not everything. We need to get a full detailed explanation for some of the things we'll find out and understand in heaven. But it's about understanding that your parents genuinely look out for you. 
so when i think about the reasons like why i was like i can't wait to go to it it was just really the thing about independence like there are so many rules you have to be back by a certain time you always have to communicate every time you're leaving the house you always have to as in like i want to be able to wake up i decide my program in 10 minutes and i get up and i go no one's going to ask me questions no one's going to what and then i can call you occasionally to check on you so that was generally the thing which is normal because as human beings we crave and desire independence it's the way that god wired us because it's the thing that also then helps us pushes us to work and to you know to work hard and be go-getters and all of that so it 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 has a good side to it but we can't desire independence to the point of isolation oh you're pretty good girl all right <laughs> So what does that mean? Where you crave for independence so much that you want to break away from the confines that God has placed you in to watch over you and protect you so that you can be somewhere on your own to do your own thing without having people hovering over you, which is not God's desired plan for man and for humanity. God created us for community and our community, our first form of community from the time we are born is family. It's the institution that God created first. And if you look even in the Bible, it was such a closeness of community to the point that they lived in steads, in homesteads. So like, for example, when Isaac went to get a wife, he even didn't go. They had to get someone to go and get him a wife, but they went and got him a wife. She came to his father's home. So they were staying in their father's home but in their own different space. So it's that God really created and desired that we be in community. I think I'm going to have a different conversation on this specifically a little later because there are so many things spewing through my head to back up this point, but I have like two more points to go, so I don't want to spend too much time. But and the main point of this is this, that... As human beings, we desire independence, we crave it, we need it, we want it so much, and that's okay, and it's normal. But we can't push ourselves too much into the space of independence that we ignore and walk away from the very thing that God has given us. Our parents, of course, are going to be tough. Of course, they're going to ask you at your age of 27 why you came home at this time, or where you're going to be, or where you what. But it's you need to understand the heart behind it, that they're not asking you from a place of control even though it may feel like it they're asking you because they are looking out for you and they care for you and they don't have to explain every single thing to you because they're your parents so by nature they are over you and so theirs is to instruct and they may or may not give reason and that should be okay sometimes it's a fear of your safety and your protection are you going to be okay coming back home at 11 that's mostly for girls but even for a guy you know they still beat guys also and they still what so they'll ask you all these questions they'll do all that so it's that they've looked after your whole life they know you so much more than you know yourself or like okay a lot of things maybe that you don't know you know things you know that happened when you were younger when you were a baby how you used to behave how you know all those things like they've known you and watched you grow and they have a plan and a desire in their hearts for you to see you succeed and so they want to be at the forefront of your success and watch you bloom and grow and become this great thing. So many times it comes off as a form of control, which it might be, but that you deal with in prayer. You just ask God to allow you to be able to obey them and to see the heart in what they're doing and to also open their hearts to, to allowing you to thrive and explore your independence, which you can still do even while you're in their home. That they allow you to try out new things, they allow you to do all sorts of things, they allow you to, yeah, to discover yourself and start to serve in different places and do all these things while, you know, without pushing you a little too much. It's just like there's nothing prayer can't fix. So that's lie number one, this lie of I need to be independent, I need to go do my own thing, I need to what, 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 who, 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 wah, wah, wah. It's a lie. According to the Bible, we were built for community. Um, there are instances where you maybe might be asked to leave. Your parents have an expectation of you, like once you finish university, you get your own house, start your own life and everything, which is okay because you honor your parents and one of the ways you honor them is with your obedience. But... In that instance, you must not think of yourself as completely independent from your parents. 
So that means that if you're struggling with something, it's okay to reach out and ask for help. You are their child. They are not going to beat you and lock you up and put you in a dungeon because you are struggling with rent this month or because you don't know what to do with your business, which direction to take. They love you and they'll be more than happy to help you, um, you know, navigate all the different things of life. You actually have to give your parents some credit or a lot of credit because they've lived years much more than you. So they've seen things, they've experienced things, whether, you know, themselves or by way of association, they've seen people go through things. So they have the answers you're looking for. So don't count yourself as a completely independent thing from your parents, even when you're outside of their home, because they're still your parents. Even now, I'm married. I'll tell you, my mom watches my YouTube channel all the time. Hey, mama. I'm just seeing for an Instagram notification from her. So cool. Anyway, I text my mom all the time. And sometimes it's just like really silly things. I'm like, oh my gosh, mommy, this recipe, there's this thing you used to make. What did you used to use? Blah, blah, blah. And then she'll send them to me. The other time I was asking her, what did you do to dust the house? Because like, it's really hot these days and we live in a dusty place. It gets so dusty. I'm like, how did you clean the house? It sounds like a dumb question, but it's like my genuine question because I would clean when we were on holiday once in a while when they tell me to. It wasn't a routine thing I did. So, and I never thought to pay attention to how many times the house is cleaned. You know what I mean? So it's a thing I asked her. So it's that even now that I'm married and I really am now starting a new family of my own and living, you know, like I'm the one running the home. I'm not claiming full independence from my parents because your parents will always be your parents. So yeah, that's the wisdom that I have. Wow, we've taken all this time on one point. I'm going to shorten <laughs> the rest of them, I hope, for, for me. <laughs> all right, number two, number two, number two, number two. The second lie is about relationships, that you have to go through many frogs before you find your prince. Disney has told us those things, has sold us that lie that you know sometimes you're going to go through all sorts of things. What, bitchy? Guys, it's actually possible for you to find one person, date one person, get married to that one person, and be happy with that one person for the rest of your life. You don't have to date five different people. Simanya for character development. And I don't know what character development is not in the Bible. <laughs> I mean, yeah, God developed people's character. But in terms of this, like that thing, it's like an ongoing theme on the internet about how, you know, when people get go through failed relationships, they're like, yeah, I think God sent me this person just for some character development. It's not there in the Bible. There's no person in the Bible that God allowed to date a person that it wouldn't work out with simply that their character would be developed. God tests and develops our characters in different ways. Everyday life situations that stretch us and challenge us, but not necessarily heartbreak. Do you know what I mean? So it's that pressure can be, uh, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable and it's stressful and challenge is uncomfortable and it's stressful. But that's the way God tests us. He doesn't break our, do you know what a heartbreak is? It's, like it literally affects your hormones and your emotions. Like people can get into depression because of heartbreak. Depression is not from God. So he wouldn't break a thing that could potentially lead to depression. So like from today, come to that thing in your head of God brings certain people for character development. He does not, not in that context. So just what you can do is start to pray and believe God for it. And just receive it that you are going to go through one relationship and it's going to be that it relationship and it's going to work and you're going to get married to that one person and be happy if you've already gone through a number of relationships <laughs> we are here we are many you're not alone but as you can see i you know straightened that path started speaking the right thing and praying over that and declaring and then you know from the moment i learned and understood this thing called intentional dating and everything i've not Kutomerad so much. Kutomerad in English. We're going to put a subtitle. I've not knocked a wall with it. Like, I've not erred. I had a one car interesting, tricky situation in there. But, like, you know, you move quickly and you come back. I think I shared either here or on my Instagram or somewhere. Um, yes, but I also know people in my life around me. I have friends who have gone through that thing of living with not living with of dating 
one person the person that they dated is the one that they dated the only one then they got engaged they got married and they're happily married or they've only dated that one person they engaged they're about to get married or they've only dated one person but they are planning you know their engagement planning to get married planning to spend the rest of their lives together so you don't have to keep hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting and trying then you're like okay oh, this one has taught me this this one has taught me this and you know pop culture really encourages that there's that song by ariana grande coming to my head thank you next i've never actually listened to it fully but i think i've heard like not intentionally but i think i've heard it once i know that general gist of the song is she's talking about her exes that this one taught me about what this one was for what this one was for what so you keep hearing things like that all the time in songs seeing them in movies hearing people's stories and experiences and you start to think that that's the normal thing but it's not biblically the normal thing is that you do it once in fact in the bible there was even no dating a man would go he would identify the woman he wants to marry take gifts to the family the family would allow and they get together and they are married yeah so even this dating thing is in fact that's the other thing that the world has told us then we date then you date you date someone for five years you're still discovering them trying to figure out if you know them enough if that thing works i try to get a phd what i try to do five years i digress that's not the point of my conversation today so let's leave it i'm sorry yeah never mind <laughs> but you guys i talk really fast and i'm trying to make a point and i'm pressed for time i'm so sorry but i hope you can hear me yeah if you can't you can just turn on the captions on your youtube i think youtube will hear me i don't know we pray anyway so you don't have to go through several frogs before you find your prince charming you can find prince charming one time the first time you bang it you do the thing right you go yeah you bang it one time you're like boop, 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 boop. <laughs> this is me trying to reduce the amount of time i'm using to <laughs> tell my little things but anyway yeah so that's the thing if you just look at the pattern all through the bible the people um hold on. if you just look at the pattern all through the bible the people did um they married you know one person they didn't go through the whole dating process the whole it was they were switched on like they knew what they want they've seen a person they're like this person has something what at what let's get it moving and i think that that's a really it's a safer way to do it that you don't get into the thing if you're not sure in your heart of how you want it to end and where you want it to end because one of you is bound to get hurt and you don't want to be the person who ends up getting hurt or the person who hurts others both are not good situations so get into a relationship when you're sure that you want marriage and that's the end goal that you both have desired and you do the thing once and you finish yeah like it can happen it's possible so that's the second lie you don't have to keep you don't have to date many frogs and kiss many frogs before you prince before you find your prince charming you can find him one time move quickly and intentionally and end up married and you'll be happy with your prince charming forever and ever amen then lie number three <laughs> god help me to say this really quickly okay let's see if we can keep this video 25 seconds 25 minutes we can do it okay so lie number three is this thing called self do you as long as you're doing you and you're doing what makes you happy you know it's okay like life is hard so just focus on yourself make sure you're doing what makes you happy you know wah 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 yada 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 like yeah just do you and the thing with that is it's very we were created for more than just ourselves so it's such a lie because the enemy has pushed us to a corner where he has made our lives so hard to the point that it's a thing of okay i'm alive i'm going to stay alive i'm going to you know push through this life thing but let me just do everything i can to make sure me i'm okay which it shouldn't be so the devil has pushed you so much into a corner and squeezed you and made your life feel so hard to the point that you now feel like if i just do the bare minimum like just do what i need to do to make sure that i'm happy my mental health is in check my physical you know i have my physical exercise going on i you know i'm doing okay at work i show up for work as much as i can or i you know show up 
in the spaces where I'm needed as much as I can, where I'm around the people that love me. You know, we get to celebrate each other every now and then and celebrate life and all that. And you're like, this is it, guys. This is life for me. But the thing is, we were created for more than just ourselves. Because if it was just about taking care of yourself and making sure you're okay, God has the capacity. He would have put all of us on our own little island. He would have created each one of us, placed us where we were, said, okay, for you, this is your island, Miley. You, for you, this is your whatever. And then it's like, all you have to do is make sure you get through this life. Like, life is not one grand episode of Survivor. <laughs> I don't know why Survivor came to my head, but... When I was thinking of little islands on your own, whatever, that's sort of what came to my head. You're not in a grand episode of Survivor where your goal is to just make sure you're okay and you survive. I'm not saying don't care about yourself, don't think about yourself, don't focus on yourself. It's important because the Bible says love your neighbor as you love yourself. And for you to love your neighbor, you love your neighbor to the extent that you love yourself. So it's actually important that you love yourself and you pour into yourself, keep reading, keep learning, keep filling your cup because when you fill your cup, then you're able to overflow. But the thing is, that's the missing part that we always, that we seem to forget in the, that we, in this generation, it's like the thing we don't pay attention to so much, the thing of overflowing. You can't keep filling your cup, filling your cup, filling your cup, but then you never pour into another cup. The point of your cup being filled is that you may fill another's cup. So you can't focus on yourself entirely, on your mental health, on your physical health, on your spirituality, on your everything, and you never share anything that you have with the world. You never serve what God has put on the inside of you to the world. You never, you know, serve the people around you, serve, you know, God's people, find ways of intentionally and constantly pouring into God's people. It can't be, you know, the point of self care and you know self actualization and whatever is for self it's not it's that everything we do for ourselves is that we may be able to pour into others so it's not enough for you to just you know read the word of god to pray and ask god to come into your life and to heal you and do all these things and then you keep it at that and never pour into others the purpose of your life is for you to serve others you exist at such a time as this for a time as this it's not a mistake that you are here alive in this generation at this time god brought you and put you here in this generation for this particular time so it means that you have something to give if you're still alive you still have purpose pastor b3 said that a few days ago one of my favorite preachers ever my pastor that i talked about in point one so you have to um you have to pour into others because that's the point of purpose it's not your purpose has nothing to do with you by the way in case you were trying to think i wonder what my purpose is what am i here for blah 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 hint number one it's not about you there's someone else whose purpose involves serving you and pouring into you and you your purpose is connected to another person serving them and pouring into them and that's what makes the world a better place or that's what will make the world a better place when we remove the focus from ourselves and think about others how can we serve others and someone in their mind now is thinking you don't understand i can't serve others from a place of emptiness or from a place of what which is true but I don't think it's possible to be extremely and completely empty in every area of your life at any given point. It's that maybe right now mentally you're not doing okay, but you have money more than the person next to you, more than your neighbor. You know that your neighbor has a child who's never gone to school and there's a nursery school just there that costs 50,000 shillings. Instead of eating out tomorrow, get that 50,000 shillings, bless your neighbor and say, hi, I'd like to take your child to school if that's okay. I've noticed they've been out of school for a while and I just thought I'd bless you. You're able to do something. And in doing that, you've unlocked a certain joy for yourself, by the way, because there's such a joy that comes with serving. If you'd like to know more about that, check my last video from last week. Ooh. Anyway, but yes, so there's a joy that comes with serving. So you've unlocked a certain joy, you've unlocked a certain something, but you are walking in a certain level of purpose. It's not always this grand, great, big plan. It's that you do small steps. You take small steps of serving here, serving there. And as you continue to do that, it starts to form you start to see the things that your heart is more drawn to than others the things that stir you up and fire you up the things that make your heart leap for joy the things that just make you so nice 
those other things and so as you continue to serve people around you as you continue to get yourself immersed in things you start to clearly and more definedly figure out what your purpose is so serve life is not just about me 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 in any situation there is always a way in which you can serve another person i've only given an example of financial because i am out of time but that was the first example to come to my head also but i trust that you're getting the point so um i know that god is going to give you the wisdom how to apply that particular example and that particular wisdom to your specific life to your specific situation that in one area thing isn't working but in another area there is a way in which you can serve another person or focus outward and not make it completely about you while you ask god to help you work on this other area where you feel like you're lacking so that once you are now full or starting to fill up then you can pour you don't always have to wait to be full because life is not it's not a journey of perfection. There's never a point where you're at a hundred in everything. So everything that I share here is my life stories, lessons, experiences. It's not to say that I'm a hundred percent at everything in my life. It's just I'm on a learning journey. And so I'm bringing you in on my learning journey so we can all do something and achieve something great together. Does that make sense? Of course it does. Awesome. All right. If you are there and you've never given your life to Jesus, you've never you know accepted him in your heart and said you know what i want to do this life thing with you because life is so much easier with jesus i shared a while ago again still on this channel about how i used to live a life of no purpose i was out drinking every day i was dealing with a lot of stuff inside i had pain i had hurt i had anger i had a lot of things but when i started actually walking with jesus i never prayed any prayer I never, you know, took a certain journey, followed 10 steps or whatever. I just found that the things in my heart had started to change. Yeah, there's a prayer to receive Jesus. That's not what I'm saying, that I prayed. But I never prayed a prayer for the things in my life that were going wrong to be made right. I just started to follow God and to serve him and to pursue relationship with him. And the more I focused on God, the more he stripped all the things that were not of God out of my life. So I'd like to invite you into that today, into a life of joy, pure joy, regardless of circumstance, into a life of peace that surpasses all understanding, into a life of purpose and significance, one where you're able and aware of how to serve others at any given situation and you draw joy from that. A life of just ah, goodness. So I'd like to invite you to say this prayer with me. Um, just say, Lord Jesus, I receive you in my heart today. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for joy, peace, and purpose. Take my life and do something significant with it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And just like that, yeah, you made the decision and your life is going to get better if you allow yourself to walk this journey with Jesus and get closer to him and everything. So you can just reach out to me on my Instagram. Marley Quaker is my handle. Let me know that you made this decision so that I can walk with you, celebrate with you, just show you you know, a few basics as you will get into the faith, the things I did, the things that worked for me so that you can actually experience it because it's possible to say that prayer and still continue to live life the same. And I desire that you experience it so that I'm not living the good life alone. You can also call 0775-642-449. Just say, hi, I uh, received, you know, Christ. I made a decision to receive Jesus in my heart, watching Moments with Marley, and I would like to you know, for you to pray with me or for someone to help me understand and make sense of this journey. And there'll be a pastor on the other end of that phone to help you make sense of the whole thing and start off that journey. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has blessed you. Um, invite your friends to watch, share this link with as many people as you can. Join me again next Friday, same time. If you know some other things, you know, lies that the world has taught us that you think we can debunk again together, share them in the comment section. I'll do it in the next video or in a video to come. I'll note them down. 
think it through and then come back and share the wisdom that the Lord puts on my heart. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.